Greetings LEGO fans! My name is Sasha, the Montreal LEGO Maniac, and for this week's release, I'm looking forward to showing you the Disney train and station. This is kit number 71044, has 2,925 pieces, and I'm looking forward to this one because A, I like to get my hands on these cute little Disney minifigures, and B, this is an app controlled power functions kit, so it should be a lot of fun to play with right out of the box. Being able to drive the train back and forth with my phone would be fun, of course, and I think it goes out saying that when I'm all done with that, taking it apart and repurposing this, has a whole new world of possibilities. So, before we can get to any of that, of course, let's get it unboxed, have a look at what we have inside, so we can get this build underway. Disney train and station. Now that I've built it and had a chance to play with it, I gotta say that these power function trains are more fun than I thought they were gonna be. The sound effects are cute and entertaining, the top speed goes quite a bit faster than I thought it would, and it's even possible to derail it, which I thought was gonna suck, but in actuality, I just wanna do it again. But before we get to the train, let's have a look at the station. This quaint little two story plus attic structure is looking really solid with its brick and mortar exterior and tanned roof. Right down in front, we can see that the station has three forward-facing entrances, each with its own light either just above or just beside the door. And just in front of the main door, we also have a bunch of little studs on the ground so you can secure your minifigures in place. Above that, it's clearly marked that this is Disney Station with a population of 22 million, which I have no idea what that means, and an elevation of 138 bricks, which I don't get either because this station is not 138 bricks tall and I'm not sure what else it could be referring to. And just above that, 
we've got a tiny little Disney Railroad plaque. Moving on up to the second floor, the exterior of the building changes from red and gray bricks to beige sloped roof with a bunch of cute little windows protruding. Except for over on the right side, where the brick continues for one more floor, we have a little balcony, and just above that, we have a clock built into the steeple showing that it's only 10 minutes to noon. Topping it all off, around the edge of each roof, we have some ornate decorations, which look pretty striking. Zooming in a little bit, you can see that this trim is entirely made up of handcuffs, which looks pretty great and I find to be a very creative way of creating this beautiful look. Coming around to the back side of the building, we see the interior scenes are nicely exposed for easy access. Starting on the first floor, all the way over on the left side, the first thing we find is a little train, nicely mounted on a little display piece, and a little painting of the same train just above it. Sliding over to the right, we find the ticket counter, where, right on the counter, we have the ticket prices. On the wall behind that, we've got a little train conductor poster, some mail on the table, and a cute little potted plant. Continuing to the right, we have the main door, a little bench for sitting, this white box on the ground, which I'm not really sure what it's for. Just behind that, we've got an umbrella stand with three umbrellas ready to go, a variety of art on the wall, another clock, and on the ground just beside that, we've got a luggage scale. Up one story to the second floor, over on the right hand side, the first thing we find is a nice big comfy chair with a little mug right in front of it. Looks like a cozy little waiting zone to me. Making our way to the left, we've got a little hallway with three windows, each covered with some pretty sweet looking drapes. And on the floor, we've got a nice long carpet. And this all leads to the room with the balcony door, where we've got a nice potted plant on the right side. And over on the far left wall, we've got another train mounted on an added display stand with its own little painting depicting it just above that. Finally, up in the attic crawl space, we have a tiny representation of the iconic Disney castle, with a little box in front of it having an image of the same castle. I'm not sure why this is up in the attic, tucked away where the minifigures can't even access it, but here it is for us to enjoy. And with the station all covered, that brings us to the train. This train is four cars long. The locomotive, the coal car, the little viewing car, and a comfortable caboose. Starting in the front with the engine, which doesn't actually contain a power function motor, but it certainly looks like it's ready to pull the train around the track. Having a little red cabin for the conductor, a long green boiler that's topped off with a pressure valve, whistle, bell, and smokestack. A little light in front of that, all mounted on those classic train wheels, and with the nose of the train being capped off with a cow catcher. Having a peek at the front of the train, we can see the forward facing light is an old school lantern, and there's a tiny little number one right in the center of the boiler. Coming around to the other side, right in front of the conductor's cabin and next to the boiler, there's an extra little black mechanism here. I'm not really sure what this is for. And swinging around to the back, we can see there's room for one minifigure here. And to make it a little bit easier to get in and out, the top of the roof just pops open, giving you easy access. Just behind the engine, we have a little coal car. Nothing too fancy here, pretty basic. But this car does contain the power functions motor, battery pack, and controller. At the front end, you can see where the motor connects up to the controller, plus an extra port for an additional motor for some other future project. Ideally, I would have liked to see this a little more covered, a little more hidden but they didn't for whatever reason. And it's honestly, despite this picture making it look large, pretty small and hard to see. So it's not such a big deal. And finally, on the top, there's a little panel you can flip open so you can access the power button. Just behind the coal car, we have this little viewing car with open concept walls, a white and blue lining on top, and seating for 14. The passengers of this car will have a really good view of whatever passes the train on the left side. I just hope there's nothing interesting on the right side. To facilitate the minifigs getting out of this one, the awnings on both sides pop open, giving you access to all 14 seats. Spinning it around to look at the other side, we can see there's not too much going on here. So let's move on to the red caboose. Instead of the roof popping open, on this one, the left wall pops open, revealing a pretty cozy little interior. We've got three big comfy armchairs, two with square pillows on the left, one with a round on the right, and a nice little tea set in between. Again, everything is facing to the left of the train, so I hope there's nothing interesting on the right hand side. And in both the front and back of the caboose, there's room for a minifigure to stand here, with a little railing surrounding them for a little extra security. Adding a few extra tracks from the holiday train set, because I can, and it makes it more fun, it's time to play with this thing. And I find the sound effects I included with this are a nice addition to the experience. The little engine sound as it just starts to struggle as it's moving forward. The engine sounds speeding up as you keep hitting the plus button to make it go faster. little bells and whistles as you want to have on a train. And, and the screeching brake as it comes to a halt. 
And of course, this train not only travels forward, but it also goes in reverse as well, just in case you miss your stop. And the top speed of this train is actually pretty impressive, enough so that you have to be a little bit careful, because once it picks up all that momentum, going through those curves, it's not too hard to derail this thing. Which, as I mentioned, I thought would kind of suck, but it's more fun than I thought it would be, so I'm looking forward to doing it again, and again, and again. And now to the minifigures, where we have Mickey, dressed in his conductor's outfit, Minnie, wearing a pretty classic mini outfit, Goofy, wearing his standard own, and Chip and Dale, all dressed up and wearing matching fancy ticket collector outfits, with Dale having decided to remove his jacket, sporting just the vest at the moment. With the features now covered, it's time to look at how I feel about the playability, display value, and desirable pieces to reuse for future projects. And I gotta say, this set gets a pretty good score across the board. As a playset, I think it's pretty obvious. This train's great, going back and forward, wiping it out, sound effects, a lot of fun to be had here, no doubt. As a display piece, I find it to be okay. It's nothing too fancy here, nothing that really stands out, but it still looks pretty good sitting on the shelf. And if you have that train going around, of course it's gonna grab some attention. But for me personally, there's much more appeal to taking this one apart and repurposing it than putting it on display. I've really been looking forward to making my own mock and another structure tied to my LEGO City. But I didn't really feel I had the matching bricks to make a nice exterior. But with this kit, I feel I have everything I need, so I'm looking forward to doing that. And sure enough, the train station could just be popped down to LEGO City as is. But with its open back, it's not really a good fit for the other buildings. It doesn't quite match or fit in. And as to the train, while it's pretty cool as is, I'm definitely looking forward to making something that's of my own creation. And as you saw, there's an extra port on this little battery pack. So I can add an extra motor to do something. I don't know what, but something interesting. So a lot of possibilities here that I'm definitely looking forward to exploring. But if you do want to keep this train intact, you might have noticed it's a lot of red and green, a little bit of gold highlights. So it's a really good addition to a holiday setup if you want to make one. So in conclusion, this kit really checks off all the boxes. It's fun to play with. It's pretty good for display. And there's a lot of appeal for the repurposing of the pieces. And what more could you want out of Lego than that?